let's talk about the birthday paradox. So first a bit about probabilities. So assuming things are nice, the probability of some event x happening, what you have to do is count the number of ways that x can happen and divide that by the total number of outcomes. So what do I mean by nice? Right. So if you wanted to uh, compute the probability of you're making an A in this class, you wouldn't say, well, the total number of outcomes, I might make an A, a B, a C, a D, or an F. So that's five outcomes. And the number of ways I can make an A is just making an A. So that's one. So you don't have a one in five probability, a one-fifth or 20 percent probability of making an A. Um, the assumption that things are nice, you want to assume that things are uh, independent in some way, right? so that each event is equally likely to happen. Uh, you would learn more about this in a, in a statistics class, but for us, we're just going to assume, we're just going to compute probabilities of things where each outcome is equally likely to happen. Right? And so under those assumptions, to compute the probability of something happening, again, you just take the total number of ways that x can happen and divide by the total number of possible outcomes. So let's look at an example. Suppose I have a fair die, a six-sided die, and I want to compute the probability of rolling an even number. Well, the total number of outcomes is six because I might roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And the number of ways that I can roll an even number, well, I could roll a two, a four, or a six. So there's three ways that um, even could happen out of a total of 6. So 3 over 6 is 0.5 or a 50 percent probability. Now here's the birthday paradox. So imagine a group of people. How big do you think the group would have to be before there's a pretty good chance that two people in the group have the same birthday? So the answer is probably lower than you think. You might want to pause the video now and just get out a sheet of paper and scribble around a little bit to see if you can come up with a good guess. It turns out uh, the birthday paradox is not a paradox. It's just that humans are really bad at estimating probabilities. So the result is just surprising. So let's compute some examples that perhaps aren't so surprising and then we'll go to, uh, uh, to Python to compute so that we can actually see what's going on. So instead of counting, uh, computing the probability that there's um, two people in the room with the same birthday, instead we're going to compute the probability that there's no matches in the birthday because that ends up being a little bit easier, right? And this will give us the right. Uh, this will tell us the information we know because if we know the probability of no match, then 100% minus that probability is the probability that there is a match. Okay. So now we just got to compute the number of ways to arrange uh, birthdays with no matches divided by the total number of ways to arrange the birthdays. So we'll start off easy. Suppose it's a room with one person. Now there's 365 ways, I've written it here in red, to arrange one birthday with no matches. Right? That one person could have a birthday on any one of the 365 days in the year. So just a note, I'm omitting February 29th to make the computations easier. Uh, and now I need to count the number of total ways to arrange um, one birthday. I've notated that in blue, and so there's 365 ways to do that, right? And so there's the number of ways to arrange one birthday with no matches is same as the number of ways to arrange uh, one birthday. So the probability of no match is 365 over 365, which is 1, so it gives me a probability of 100%. Not surprising. Now let's compute the probability of no match if there's two people in the room. So there's 365 ways to arrange one birthday with no matches. And for the second person, there's only 364 ways to choose where they, that birthday is going to go. Right, so there's 365 times 364 ways to arrange two birthdays with no matches. If I just want the total number of ways to arrange two birthdays, it's 365 for the first person, 365 for the second, so 365 times 365 total ways to arrange two birthdays. So the probability of no match with n equals 2 is 365 over 364 divided by 365 times 365, which gives us about 99.7% chance. Right? So not surprising again. If there's only two people in the room, it's highly 
likely that there's no match, so it's highly unlikely that there is uh, a match. For n equals 3, we follow the same pattern. If I want to arrange three birthdays with no matches, there's 365 days to choose for the first person, 364 for the second, and 363 for the third, because the third person can't share a birthday with the first, and also can't share a birthday with the second. Right? If I just want to arrange the possible birthdays, there's 365 times 365 times 365. No constraints there. And so the probability of no match is 365 times 364 times 363 divided by 365 times 365 times 365, about 99.2%. And I think you see the pattern now. So let's ramp it up. Suppose there are 12 people in the room. So now there's going to be 365 ways to compute, uh, ways to have the first birthday, 364 choices left for the second, and so on. All the way down, we want to compute 12 terms out. And so for the 12th person, there's only 354 days to choose for their birthday so that it doesn't collide with the previous 11 people. If I want to arrange 12 birthdays, uh, with no consideration about matches. It's just 365 times 365 uh, 12 times. So then the probability of no match is 365 times 364 all the way down to 354 divided by 365 times 365 12 times. So that gives us about 83.3 percent probability of no match. Okay, so about 17 percent probability of having a match at this point. But I think you see the pattern. So let's go for general n. For general n, the probability of no match in the denominator, in the bottom, I'm going to have 365 times 365 n times. And in the top, I'm going to go 365 times 364 times 363. And I'm going to keep going down by 1 until I have n terms. If I regroup that, I can view that as 365 over 365 times 364 over 365 times, and so on, until I have n terms. Whenever you have this dot 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 in an explanation, and you have a predictable number of terms to use, right, so in this case n, that means we're going to use a for loop in Python. So let's try it out and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's define a function. Um, I think in the programming assignment, uh, the function is supposed to be called birthday no clash. It takes as input a variable n. And this is going to return uh, the probability of no clash in a group of um, n birthdays. Right, and we're making some simplifying assumptions here. We're assuming uh, no leap year, so 365 days in the year. And we're also assuming um, that every birthday is equally likely. Now, this isn't quite um, accurate. This isn't quite real life, uh, because it turns out that some birthdays are more popular than others. For example, uh, nine months or approximately nine months after February 14th tends to be a very popular popular birthday. So think about if you know people who are born mid-November. All right, but under this assumption that all birthdays are equally likely, nobody is born on a leap year, let's run through the computation. All right. So what we saw is that we're going to have this fraction. Um, 365 is going to be on the bottom, and on the top we're going to have this 365 minus, uh, say, i and i was going to go down by 1 um, that i was going to go down by 1 uh, until you have n terms okay and we're going to keep multiplying that times the times the probability so we we have this p equals p times 365 minus i over 365. I wanted to do that in a for loop, so for i in range, uh, and then I've got to think a little bit. What do I want to range over? Well, 
if you go back to um, if you go back to the slide, so notice the first time around I should be zero, the second time I should be one, the third time I should be two, and so on. And so here I want to range uh, I is going all the way up to n, right? Because remember in Python this stops at n minus one and it starts at zero. It's going to take p the probability p and multiply p by 365 minus i divided by 365, and then it's going to update the value of p, right? So then I would want to return uh, p at that point. Python will complain if I just uh, if I just ran this because it doesn't know what p is. So we have to initialize p uh, to be one, right? Probability uh, maybe one. 100%, right? So let's save this and run it and see how that goes. So we'll run some examples that we, we do know. So birthday, no clash with one person, we expect 100%. So we get one. With uh, two people, we had that 99.7. If you go back to the slides, you'll see that. And then for 12 people, right, this was 83.2. Let's just go back. 83.29. So let's go back and check to make sure that's what we got. 83.297. Good. So it looks like we're doing the right thing. Um, notice, what do you expect if we do birthday no clash of, say, 365? Well, if there's 365 people in a room, we better have uh, essentially zero ways of making no clash, right? Because the only way that we're going to have no clash is if everyone has a different birthday. And so we have 1.45 times 10 to the minus 157, which is very, very close to zero. If I increase this to 366, now you can see there's absolutely no chance of no clash. Okay, good. So I look at this and I want to fix it up a little bit. Um, I'd much rather see percentages than these decimals, and so uh, let me change that here. Uh, I can set p equal to 100 times p, um, and that would change it to print out the or return the percentage uh, in, instead of the decimal. Um, I'm also going to round it, right? So just so that it's easier to look at, let me round it to maybe four decimal places. And so if you wanted to see um, the round function, right? the round function is a built-in function in Python. It takes as input a number um, and an optional number of digits. Right? So if you just round a number, it'll give you, it would round it to the uh, nearest integer. If you feed it um, a second input, it rounds it to that many digits, decimal digits. Okay, so let's save this and run it and see. So let me try that birthday no clash again of 12, and we see this 83.2975%. Good. To just to get a sense of how fast this thing shrinks, um, let's run a little simulation. So for n in range, let's say, let's take the first 50 people. Um, I'm going to print n and no birthday clash, or birthday no clash. All right, and so this is just going to print the number of people in the room and the probability of no clash. Okay, so you can see this probability of having no clash shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. So right here around, uh, say, 22%, there's a 52% chance of no clash, so that's about a 48% chance of a clash. And the magic number 23, that's where it flips. It's now more likely that there is a, a birthday match than there isn't one. In fact, if you go down here to, uh, say, like 40 people in a room, if you're at 40 people in a room, there's only a 10% chance or 11% chance that there is no matching birthday. Right? There's a 90% chance, approximately, that, that you have a match in that room. Okay, so that should help you complete the uh, programming assignment.